Welcome to Lado Files. I am Chris Lado. We have a special live edition today. It seems like so much is happening so quickly in the anomalous phenomena world, the UAP world, that the best is just to get a live stream, get access to your questions. Today we'll have on Max Moscovich. He's a reputable reporter, <laughs> reputable reporter from the Netherlands. He's written some amazing articles, especially recently on Grush, and he's been deep inside the UAP inside the phenomena, as well as Jay Anderson. He's from Project Unity. He's just traveled across the US and he's interviewed recently Tim Burchett. Uh, so we'll have both those guys on right now. Thank you so much for being here. We'll also take patron questions. Thank you for all my patrons. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Chris Lado and to support the channel, get access to exclusive content. And you can also get access to questions such as these. So we'll bring on our guest first, I'll bring on Jay Anderson. Thank you so much for being here, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me. Real pleasure. Are you jet lagged at all from traveling uh, uh, to the US and back so much? It seems like you're there more than me. Uh, you know, I'm kind of getting used to it at this point. Um, but that's, it's, you know, when you're traveling to like LA or California, oh my God, like I, I definitely feel that jet lag. I'm actually going to be going to Morocco tomorrow uh, for a week. So uh, I'm still getting that travel bug. Okay. Is that uh, for vacation or for work? Genuinely just to turn my brain off for a week and explore okay. some when you, you know. I can understand. I mean, it's it's such a difficult subject, man. We're talking about <laughs> crimes against humanity, such, I mean, it's serious, serious stuff. We have to remember that, uh, yeah, we're all, we're all uh, in this to win it, you know, and to uh, yeah, man. Yeah. try and keep it's, it sane. It's, it's so, a balancing yeah. act. It's a balancing act. That's for sure. Excellent. All right. Let's bring on a uh, Max Moscovich, thanks for being here, man. Thank you so much. How are you doing, Max? Hey guys. Hello, I'm doing good. How are you guys? Yeah, great. Great. We were just uh, chatting before about uh, your recent article that you wrote uh, in Dutch, actually, and you said that it was shared by more. It had more than a million views. Going well, into almost English. a million on Reddit. On Reddit. So okay. And but in Google, Dutch, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Google Translate owes me money. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Reddit yeah. actually. If, if it's Google Translate, it, it, it sounded like it was written in English, to be honest. It was really good. That's so, impressive. Yeah, I was kind of jealous I hadn't written it at, as the Portugal News. Um, well, I'm kind of jealous on your channel. You have way more view, uh, way more uh, subscribers. So, <laughs> Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, Max, so you have a, a YouTube channel as well, and Jay as well, Project Unity. I, was ju I just watched uh, your interview with Tim Burchett, and you just had a two-and-a-half-hour interview with Ross Coltart. Yeah, so I have to say, Jay, man, I, I am jealous as well. So what <laughs> those interviews are amazing. What, what was your take on them? Oh, thanks, man. I mean, it's always it, I, I love talking to Ross anytime he's on. He's just a, a great guy and a thorough reporter. So to have him on after this incredible series of, uh, you know, announcements from David Grush was awesome. And uh, he did give us that interesting uh, tidbit of information about a, an apparent vehicle that's too big to, to move and that they're studying it undercover. Uh, whether that's going to come to light, who knows? But it was an interesting talk. And uh, Tim Burchett, again, you know, the thing with, with the thing with Burchett, I feel like it's just good to get people on if you can, who are in that space, because for anyone who's just coming into the, the subject, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to see that there's people in the political sphere that are taking it seriously. And, uh, and are actually trying to get answers on it. And I think Burchett's a genuinely good guy and uh, wants to try and get as much out as he can within the limited means that he has available to him, but he's still trying his hardest. And we need more of that. And it's not a partisan issue, as he likes to remind people. And as most of us should be aware, it's, you know, it's a bipartisan across the aisle issue and uh, we need to get more answers on it. I am relatively dubious of how much we're going to get from the government, if I'm being completely honest, but I still think it's an important process because the process itself allows there to be destigmatization around different areas. So into the scientific arena and into kind of just general society, if the DOD and the ONI and the ODNI and the ICIG and all these different, you know, acronyms and uh, impressive alphabet letters are taking this seriously, then it gives people permission to start taking it seriously in the wider world. So I think that's what I'm trying to do with my interviews as much as possible is, is not only try and destigmatize the issue in general, but also try and introduce some of the deeper, more philosophical, more challenging ideas and concepts around the phenomenon in a way that's uh, a bit more palatable, if I can. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my driving reason for being in the field. 
Oh, excellent. So we've had people from, uh, I saw Tasmania, from Australia, from Porto, Portugal. You know, you All did, over the world. Uh, you're, you're in uh, England right now, I guess. You're back home. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, Max, we have you in uh, the Netherlands. I'm in Portugal. So uh, We're international, uh, baby. Guy. It's really becoming a, you know, an international, I think, decentralized effort. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned absolutely. you don't think it's going to come from the government, which I'm pretty disappointed in. You know, to be honest, I was very frustrated lately. I know you uh, were. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes, yeah, whatever. Internet never forgets. Uh, so what's your take, Max? What's your take uh, on all this stuff from, from the Netherlands? You know, what is what do the Netherlands think take on this? Oh, man, the, the Netherlands are completely complacent. They're still... <laughs> they look... It's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of horrible because uh, basically I'm, I'm still the only guy uh, really covering uh, the topic. Um, mm. And whenever there's something published over here, it's usually copy paste from the United States or whatever. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm the only guy who's actually talking to the key figures in uh, UAP disclosure. Um, so yeah, but mm. like... Um, under the radar, there's a, there's a lot of interest in Holland. The problem is the, the, the media, right? So the, the newspapers, the, 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 the television stations, they just refuse to cover anything on the topic uh, because I think it's, it's, it's like a fear uh, of, of looking foolish, right? Um, because here it still has a very bad stigma you know it's 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 completely in the paranormal realm uh to me uap is not paranormal it's the new normal you know there's something there so um I'm, I'm trying to help people get out of that stigma and uh just showing them the nuts and the bolts talking to people you know these are real people from from the the highest ranks in the in the in the, in the military in the politics in the in science right so uh but i do see there's a very vivid scene in Holland now who just are so hungry for more information. Hmm. Yeah, I did. I went on a podcast in Denmark and it seems like Denmark seems a little bit, uh, I felt it was a little more in the mainstream there. You know, it seems like it's different for each little country in Europe. Well, the, the, the Dutch are the worst people to convince. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like the worst because, you know, they're so sober. Uh, I, I always say, like you can only uh, convince a Dutch guy if an alien would stand in front of him, spit him right in the mouth and slap him in the face. <laughs> and still they won't probably believe it, but that's the Dutch. It's kind of similar, to be honest, in, in the UK. I mean, I've, I've said this a, a few times on the recent podcast, but I was out with a friend having a drink and, and he was interested in the subject. So we were you know, talking back and forth at this pub outside and, um, and just as we were leaving, these two guys who were sitting, I guess, near enough to hear the conversation were like, what, what, what are you what are you guys talking about? What, what's going on? What, can you can you tell us a bit? So we sat down and we started talking some and I was I, I have like a bit of a, you know, a PowerPoint presentation in my head for people like that. So it's like, right, well, in 2017, the New York Times put out a front page story and they just kind of roll through all of the different announcements and things. And they hadn't heard a single bit, you know, not from you know New York Times to David Grush, none of it, not a single bit. And the disbelief they had as as i was talking about it and saying that you know the inspector general for the intelligence communities basically uh, said these claims are credible and showed them the reports of david grush they're just like how have we not seen this why is this not on the media what, what, what i don't understand and and i didn't have a good answer for them because i don't really understand why it's not on the mainstream media i mean you know ross coltart said about the the stigma and i think that's a component obviously there is a component of stigma but I don't know. I don't know if it calls for something a little bit more sinister, that there is a genuine component of uh, trying to suppress this. I think there's also just the issue that there are uh, pressing global uh, events taking place that are taking precedence in the media, right? And we all know right. what they are because they're constantly in the media. So there's just like, uh, there's not enough, uh, I guess, engagement or interest, which is ironic because whenever the legacy media picks up on this story, they get the best view rates they've had in, you know, five, 10 years. So it's a, it's a weird phenomenon where they're ignoring a story that would actually give them a lot of viewership and popularity, I guess, based on stigma and, and maybe pressure from, from higher up the uh, the media hierarchy. But yeah, pe people in the UK are in a similar boat. Um, right. I think it's quite similar across Europe in general. I, you know, outside of the States, this is just not really known. Well, you completely hit the nail on the head, uh, Jay, because 
the funny thing is, like, um, my article in the Netherlands was best read for weeks, but my magazine, a review magazine, was the only magazine covering it. So there's no lack of interest, actually. But right, it's, right, it's just the fear of covering it. You know, that's that's the the whole ordeal. I'm not sure why they won't cover it because when I came out, well, actually, when the New York Times article came out in 2017. I thought the world was going to change, you know, it's like, this yeah, is, uh, yeah. you know, this is something and it was such a bummer, but, um, you know, I guess it's up to us, uh, Chris and Jay. <laughs> and I, this is, this is what you get folks. This is the best we've got. <laughs> this is the yeah, best. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was, what I was showing here was, uh, this is the reporters without borders index from 2023. And actually the Netherlands is, is high. You know, according to this, Reporters Without Borders, you know, there's cool. no or minimal censorship, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's very free. But yeah. So it could the be US it could is be down really... here at 45, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you ain't, yeah, you ain't I really think that. that's really bad. Um, it's not yeah. great. <laughs> we need to get those up as well as uh, Canada, you know. Where, where are we? Where are we on this? Where's the United Kingdom on this? Uh... I think you guys are 26. Yeah, so you're 26. Oh, wow. Okay. Not too bad, yeah. I guess. Who, who's the most free? Who's the most free? So Norway's Norway, number one. Norway, yep. Norway. And then of Ireland. Course. <laughs> Norway's way ahead. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It's always the Scandinavians who are most liberated. Yeah, I think they're just <laughs> really good at voting or something. Yeah. Taking surveys, they're really good. Really uh, good at surveys. <laughs> I, but honestly, I think press freedom should be a top priority. You know, every year we watch in the US, they have the uh, you know, the roast of the president, the, the media, they roast the media and the president, et cetera. They mm -hmm. have some comedian right. at the press conference and uh, <laughs> they should be focusing on press freedom, you know, not being number 45. I don't know. I think that that would be, that would help at least. But I, yeah. I agree the stigma. I think it really is just the stigma. People are, mm -hmm. they're so scared to cover it. What I wanted to show again um, is this. I don't know. Have you guys read this book? It's called... Um, Thinking fast and slow. No. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, quite a good book. I read it several years ago, but um, not to ruin the whole plot line. But basically, <laughs> what you have is uh, there's there's two mental processes that that humans have. One is to react very quickly, right? If there's a spear coming at your head, you just don't have time to be like, hmm, you know, should I move out of the way? So there's so there's a quick reaction, a quick thought. That we have uh, right on the you know on the tip of your tongue when words on the tip of your tongue just comes like out immediately a, like a reflex. Yep, it's a program reflex. And the point of the book is you can actually program that that reflex, obviously, you know, to get faster at dodging spears, uh, etc. And then the slow thinking is actually when you engage, it takes longer. You know, so if I, if I say what's three times three, you get the answer, right? But if I'm like what's 122 times six, now you have to go to a different level of processing. I think what ha what they've done is they've been able to put into that that immediate think fast processing is UFO dodge, you know, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did they yeah. say? Like, I mean, right. I, I talked to a guy here last week. You know, guy I play you know paddle tennis with, explained it to him. Hey, Grush, he's like, you know, what is it? I explain it, and he just looked at me and never said anything about it again. Like, I just <laughs> we hang out for hours, and I'm like, <laughs> I just I don't mention it again. And I explained it fully for for a few minutes, like you were saying, Jay. Yeah, and he just looked at me, and literally that was it. He we walked away, and since we've never even touched on it again. So I I don't know, man. I it's, think it's just programmed in to that immediate the stigma, you know. So yeah, it's an interesting in, phenomenon. In in, a, in Holland, uh, whenever like you, Jay, in a pub, when when like like when you engage with re regular folks and and uh, you talk about the topic, they just look at you glassy eyed. Yeah. And, you know, and then you explain, look, I've talked to like highly ranked military people and this is what's going on. You show them stuff and it's just not processing. It's no. just not processing. I, I don't know what, what the hell that is. It's like every time so, I have that engagement, it's like, right, next time I'll slice that bit off it. They gave me a glazed eye when I said that bit and I'm like refining the process and like eventually I'll find the best way to talk about this to someone and they'll actually believe me instead of looking at me like I should be locked up in an insane asylum because it's worthy of discussion. But yeah, dude, like the thing is, I think for people like us, we have so much information in our heads about it yeah. that 
it, it, it's probably like a tirade. It's just like a a, a, a geyser just flying at them of like, wow, well, basically this is in the Senate Intelligence Committee and the, the ICIG. And they're like, yo, I don't even know what these acronyms mean, bro. Like, I can't even understand this stuff. So it's difficult to kind of find the best baseline for conversation on this when you have a lot of stuff in your head. You have to be able to control that flow a little bit for people because yeah. they, they can find it a bit too much to take, I think. I, I developed... I developed like this this tactic because you can't just like ambush them with their CFOs, <laughs> you know. No. So so I always have a little build up. It's like okay, so there's stuff uh, noticed in in the skies we cannot explain, and then you just like move on from there, right? Yeah. And then you you s very carefully move to it could be you know something mm -hmm. like that and then you let them make their own conclusions but yeah you, you cannot just throw it at them it's, like you it's, <laughs> it's it's very it's very rare that i encounter someone who i think yeah you're ready to know that i was in my back garden and saw orange orbs fly over my house after getting into a conscious state of resonance with the universe you're definitely definitely ready for that not many people <laughs> i, I exactly. keep that relatively quiet outside of my ufo channel yeah which is funny though right because all of us are are I assume in the, in the same similar circumstances, you know, we're all going to die. Uh, we're all wondering speak, what, speak you know, yourself, what the bro. universe is like and yeah. just trying to live well for our, our families. You know, you would, you would think they would be more curious, I guess, or I don't know. Dude, I, I think uh, just living as a fighter pilot for so it was so many years where it was just, there's a very high chance you can die that I don't know. I just got tired of, of caring <laughs> you know, like, yeah. uh, and also when you, I actually, when I was going through training, um, and they, they switched from here's how to fly a plane to here's how you kill things with a plane to kill people. Then it was surviving kill. Uh, and I had nightmares every day. Uh, you know, my, my wife, girlfriend at the time said, yeah, yeah, you you're uh, saying like bombs and stuff in your sleep. So I had nightmares for several weeks. Uh, and then it just, uh, snapped, you know, and I was fine. And I think once you internalize, uh, that you're going to die, could die essentially at any moment, then it's not as big a deal, I guess, to kill someone else. But maybe that's how I, how I justified well, it. So you know what, you know what, Chris and NJ, by the way, I, I do think there's a a, a deeper psychological um, facet, which is very important, uh, I think, for for um, you know UAP disclosure because it's change. You know, people are not good with change, and you know it really messes with your axiom right so your your um so when you tell someone you we might not be alone in this universe um it's going to disqualify a lot of things for example religion you know um because you know let's say the bible the torah the quran it's basically centralizing humankind you know we're here there's god there's us that's it now <clears throat> if you take into mind like a country like, uh, say, Argentina or Pakistan, you know, like very, very religious. Now, the whole society, um, you know, it, 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 it really, uh, you know, is based on that religion. You know, it's, it's where you get your, um, it, it's how, it, it, it's like, you know, your tools for, for living a life. Now, when that all changes, you know, that's, that's very distressing for a lot of human beings. So that's why, there might be this reflex of no, I'm just going to put my head in the sand. I, I, I don't want to know because, like everything I know, now I'm going to have to doubt. And you know, may, maybe that's why you know there's so much resistance in the DOD or in the politics. But it's also on a lower level, like a like a human level. Like I have my mortgage. I need to bring my kids to school. I want to know how to be a, a good human being. Don't throw these UFOs on me because you know that's that that it's just confusing. I mean, that's, that's basically, uh, I hope she doesn't mind me throwing her under the bus here, but that's basically my sister. We're like diverting personalities. So she's right. very, very kind of just like linear, like job, family, career. That's what I'm interested in. Don't have time to kind of sit back yeah. and, and philosophize. And I'm consistently just floating off into the clouds in my brain. So like, we're just completely different people. And uh, and I love it to pieces. But yeah, that's the kind of thing with, with my sister is I remember when I was first messaging her about this stuff and showing her uh, like the New York Times articles and everything. And she was just like, I don't have time for your, for your alien theories. 
that was it. It was just like, I don't, I don't have time for alien theories. I was like, okay. So, you know, some people are just, and I don't think everyone has to be interested or should be, or should be expected to be. I think more people should be genuinely finding this interesting, but I don't think it's a, kind of like a prerequisite for us to actually manage to break open the locks on, on this secrecy because you only need a, a good handful of dedicated people who are influential that can make the kind of moves that we need for you know them to make to actually enact some form of change and i i just don't think you, we should expect everyone to to find it as fascinating as uh, as we do i mean i wouldn't have been interested in this subject unless i had ended up having experiences which led me into basically just diving straight into this this issue and it definitely seems to be the right thing for me i'm very happy doing what i do and i love having these conversations but most of the people I encounter don't want to have these kind of conversations oh. or don't want to go that deep into reality. And, and it, yeah. it's, it, it's scary. I'm trying not to swear because sometimes I, I, I'll, I'll try and not do that. Um, <laughs> but seriously, um, it's, it's genuinely quite scary. I mean, I don't necessarily think that me thinking about all these issues all the time, as much as I do get enjoyment out of it, I don't know if it makes me that happy. Like in the long run, yeah. really like, you know, having all of these ideas about like larger concepts of reality and the, the, the journey of the human species and intelligence is potentially manipulating us. I mean, it's not necessarily the recipe for a, a nice, simple, happy life. So I don't know, maybe the, maybe the people who are literally just happy working a job and, and chilling out on the weekend, maybe they're more enlightened than us, you know, because they've actually figured out a way to just be happy with the impossible infinite scope of reality. They're just like, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to keep going and don't even, you, you, you can drive yourself into a spiral of madness considering the infinite. I'm, I'm good. You yeah. Know? Well, you're, you're so right. You know, like, like if you don't have to worry about all these, these compulsive, compulsory thoughts we have, I guess. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. And you know, I, 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 I have this theory, like like people like uh, me and uh, you and Chris, uh, it's like, I guess we are that kind of human that wants to look over the edge of the cliff, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like sensible people don't look over the edge of the, crisp, <laughs> the cliff because you might fall <laughs> <laughs> or see something you don't like. But, you know, it's it, I, I think it takes idiots like us to, you know, yeah, yeah, break something for for the rest, I guess, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really uh, yeah, like you mentioned Jay, it's not comfortable uh, a lot of these things, you know, like the last several videos. Uh, I mentioned uh, Yuri Geller on here. There was one qu question about where the videos came from. Uh, my last video was on Uri Geller and yeah, there's you get many negative comments, you know. Mm. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. had con any controversial figures on your on your oh, channels. Yeah. Um, you're going to get many negative comments and yeah, it is kind of a, bu it's a buzzkill for sure. You know, like nobody wants to get that. Um, but I will say that when you mentioned you were talking Max about other, uh, religion, it, it was, it's always been interesting to me that the, the Catholic church, especially is fine with there being aliens. You know, I just yeah. thought that was so interesting when they're, <laughs> they seem very closed minded on like so many other issues, but then they say, okay, extraterrestrial life, which it seems to me would, would be a threat to their power and everything and control yeah. their message. Um, they say, yeah, it's fine. You know, there's many, uh, you know, God has many children. So well, allegedly, uh, allegedly, allegedly, they're sitting on some uh, information for centuries. <laughs> exactly. exactly. They, they, they knew yeah. about this before the CIA knew about this. You know what I mean? They, they've been the old school intelligence community that knows about this stuff. Well, if, if they... If David Grush is 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 um, you know is is correct, it was actually the the Vatican that tipped uh, the, mm -hmm. the U.S. on uh, you know something Mussolini uh, the Mussolini Mussolini, one, Mussolini yeah. was sitting on. Um, so you know th th these are things you know that are that are so fascinating to me, and you know like the, the, the plot thickens. It does. <laughs> yeah, I when I lived, I'm going back to Turkey next uh, next month. So three weeks. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm wearing my Turkey shirt uh, from the squadron. The squadron actually doesn't doesn't exist anymore. It was the lead squadron in the coup, uh, and they disbanded it. It was the right. gazelles. It had a. <laughs> its mascot was a gazelle, you know, which is of a fighter squadron. It was just so funny. It, I, anyway, I, so I lived in Turkey. I, I Turkey's an amazing country. I tr I love it. It's an amazing country. My, my ex wife is Turkish. Really? Yeah. Amazing. So X, that's my, too bad. My, uh, my son, my son is half Turkish actually. 
Cool. I, I love Turkey. The people are amazing. I'm uh, very excited to go back. There's obviously some political issues, and so I don't talk about that at all. Also very um, hairy. And hairy. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what we have here is, this is the YouTube channel for Turkey UFO Incident. So you can go to get um, a lot of information. And then I have two videos that I covered. Um, I'll just play them here while we, if we want to talk about it in the background. Uh, you can see it there. You can find it in the channel, and I'll put in the description. Uh, but Turkey UFO 2007, 2008, 2009 is supposedly many um, UFOs seen in the sky. So it was in the newspapers, and this guy, Yomaz, basically recorded many videos that I just shared. Um, probably the most compelling video for me is this video where he has the moon here, right? And... The actual moon, because um, the biggest contender right now, according to Mick West and Metabunk theory, is uh, it's a cruise ship, right? Something on the horizon. But what we have is the moon. Okay, so the moon is in the correct phase based on the date that they say. Okay, mm -hmm. so if the moon is, is this high and he's, he pans down to the UFO, then that puts the UFO at uh, 7.9 degrees uh, above the horizon. You know, and he zooms in on that thing. Um, so you'll, you'll see it here and really, really for that reason, it just seems so compelling to me. You know, it, I think it's either gotta be a, 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 you know, a hoax, a full up hoax where he somehow planned it, um, or it's real. So I'm going to go there in a few weeks and, and try and figure it out. I don't know. Had you guys heard of this case? You had Max, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually kind of tried to study it, but I have to go on uh, the footage on YouTube. Uh, there, there's a lot of people who posted the stills. Because there is uh, like like a you, there is a shape like like it's like looking through a window like yeah um, I'll show you I'm that a, I yeah. had that video queued up uh, so that was one I have two videos on it then I go through the the bodies here I think this is what you're talking about right I stabilized this footage that's the one yeah let me know if the, yeah um as best I could you know I'm not professional or anything but I, I stabilized it. And this is, yeah, basically when he zooms in, it looks different from this, but. Yeah, there's like two. Or... Yeah, you'll see here, yeah. there's like two shapes there. Um, yeah. I couldn't tell that they moved, you know, if they looked in the same, they look stationary or in yeah, the same it, general it, location. It, it, it doesn't look like they move throughout yeah. the uh, throughout the footage, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've always found these interesting. I've always found yeah. these interesting. And I, I remember when I first saw them a couple of years back and I just uploaded the, the raw footage onto the channel. And uh, I, I never felt like the cruise ship lights was a, a viable theory. I didn't know about the, the moon being used to calculate the, the horizon difference. So that's mm -hmm. good because that, that does pretty much uh, take away the idea that it's a it's yeah. a cruise ship so i mean yeah it's it's fascinating man i mean it looks like a, a very interesting shape it, it's it's difficult to know if this is actually happening or if it's just like some form of light refraction but throughout the video it looks like the vehicle actually changes its shape it, just, it almost looks like it morphs into a slightly different looking um airframe than it had yeah. previously so there's definitely some weird um refraction or, or genuine morphing of the vehicle going on and yeah, the two occupants in the middle, if they are occupants, I mean, they certainly, uh, at least from the low resolution we, we can kind of get, they certainly look like they could be the archetypal gray alien. And I mean, just of... just just based on uh, just based on what people have theorized about these things, if they were to be some form of android type entity that not not necessarily biological, then them being stationary wouldn't be too shocking. Um, so it could be something like that. But it's hard to know. It's hard to know. It's funny. It, it kind of looks like a Jetsons. Yeah, <laughs> there's like this, like this window, and they're just yeah, look, right. you can just see them. But uh, then again, you know, look, the, the the truth is sometimes stranger than fiction. You know, so mm -hmm. let's not disqualify anything here. But yeah, um, so but yeah, it, this but, is yeah. I don't know how they get around. It. I keep hearing the cruise ship theory, but right. I don't see how you get around this because you can no. check the uh, the actual moon phase. Um, based on the date and time, right? And there is some, there were some issues. He had, uh, you know, he had the wrong, like he had PM instead of AM a couple of times because he didn't speak English. Um, but the phase of the moon matches. Yeah, yeah. Date. Um, and so <laughs> I don't know how you, you would fake that. And there is more of the video, so you can- Well, that's the thing is it, it, 
it goes across the span of about three or four years worth of being yeah. filmed in the same spot. Which and and also just to kind of like move slightly into weird speculation. I mean, right. we've heard enough talk about these vehicles being some form of kind of temporal manipulating system. There's space time manipulation going on, and the fact that it appears in the exact same spot over the course of about three years. I mean it also suggests why those beings might have been, if they are beings, why they might have been stationary. Maybe we're just getting a freeze frame of time. It's time dilation. So, you know, they, they may be moving in that vehicle, but you're well, only Jay, seeing a single shadow of that time. Jay, there, there is this theory, right, that um, like like space and time, what we observe, right, that there, there's, of course, way more uh, UAP accounts worldwide. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the the... the the UAP moves very erratically, right? Like, right. Uh, like, like, like a, like a mosquito or something. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this theory that um, what we observe is just uh, another realm of space and time. So what we observe looks weird. So, well, you know, there's that theory. So I guess. Yeah. I will say um, people seem to get upset when I don't mention the, the skeptical argument. <laughs> so the, the, I, the best skeptical argument, apart from the cruise ship theory, um, is it's a lens element, right? So somehow inside is a lens element, which I don't. How does it explain videos like this? You know, um, I don't. I don't understand how it could be a lens element without moving with the lens when the lens moves, because it stays stationary in the sky yeah. when the lens moves. So that that's not. That does not look exactly. like a lens flare. That's yeah. not a sensible suggestion from whoever's suggesting it. I think the cruise ship was the most prosaic and sensible and understandable idea thrown out there. But with the horizon perspective in the in the video of the moon, it's it's clear that it couldn't possibly be a cruise ship. So, and I, I don't really see how it could be a, a model hanging in the sky. It was it was also filmed in the day in the daytime as a collection of lights. If I'm if I'm yes. right, you couldn't see the disc. You could just see a collection of orange, red, orange lights. Um, so, I mean, there's enough video footage over there's enough a of lot a span of, footage, of time. Yeah. Um, it's one of the more compelling videos, that's for sure. Yeah, there's or, a lot. Like here, I think you're talking about this one. There's several years. Yeah, see yeah. Marmar, so That's where I'm going. I'm trying to find this guy, Marat Yalman. Marat Yalman, if you're listening, bro. Yes, I'm coming <laughs> <laughs> to say hi and buy See, you a look coffee at, and look uh, at this whatever thing, you need. Man. Look at these weird kind of... Um... Uh, protrusions on either side. You see, the like the almost like circular protrusions coming out just on the edge of the uh, of the saucer. It's a really weird uh, looking vehicle, if it is a vehicle, because it, it doesn't seem to be totally symmetrical. It's got strange kind of protrusions coming out of it in different areas, and and then it seems to change shape the longer they film it, or or at least the light refracts it in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, I always found this really interesting. To be honest, this footage. Or it's on. Uh... <laughs> Really, really awesome Turkish uh, CGI, but I'm not <laughs> yeah, next gen from 2008. Oh, See, there you go. The There's the light. Yeah, yeah. Also, in that in that uh, video that you were showing just a, a second ago, you can't see a cockpit. There's no discernible cockpit, so it, it looks like it almost either it turns or it does genuinely <laughs> morph in some way or reveal a cockpit. Because when this comes into higher definition in a second, um, if it's the right bit, then you can't actually see any sort of. Uh, uh, cockpit whatsoever so i don't know it's 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 a genuinely weird looking object well I, I, it makes me think of when you hear about people that go into crafts you know um supposed uh -huh. stories and they can see through the walls yeah you know, they can yeah, see yeah. out is you know is there some sort of technology well, like we, that where you know we, we have that on planes it. already where you can just make the the window tint you know by pressing a button so i mean it's not that outlandish to think they could have a smart metal or, or something like that that can become invisible and transparent but yeah um yeah really well if these if, if if this intelligence is is so many light years ahead of us look who, who are we we're just neanderthals and and you know just uh looking to to understand whatever is is happening uh, up there you know mm -hmm. yeah this is it so yeah they're the lights yeah i'm excited yeah, it's, to, it's, uh, it's, to go it's back interesting that it's only lights in the daytime you know yes if you, exactly if, you, if you're gonna thing. if you're gonna cloak yourself like go the full way and cloak yourself <laughs> why, why 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 keep the lights hovering there in the sky i don't get it i think it has something to do with the sunlight like maybe you could need be. the sunlight to complete some circuit or something um, could be man could be go it is a know. mystery it is a mystery this is i'm thinking maybe 
uh, this could be on the opposite side of the land, you know? Could be. Yeah. Could like be. Maybe you can see like, I don't think I'd be able to see that, but that's why I want to, I just want to go and investigate everything. Cause like these lights, I'm like, okay, could that be somebody on a hill on the other side of a uh, right, Bosporus? Right. It doesn't look like it, you know, when he zooms in, but I just want to go and then maybe yeah, I can get my own. You'll get a better idea for it. I'm bringing a, yeah, just my DSLR and cameras and, um, Imagine if you go there. I get my own data. You know, it's supposed Imagine to happen every August in 2007 to nine. Maybe. Well, this, this is an interesting one because you see the camera moving, right? Um, so look at that, right? So th this is this is a, a tricky one because this could be a lens flare, actually. I guess, but you know that that's just me. And this is what you're citing, right, Max? Didn't you you saw? At least I know you had two, I believe, where you saw lights over Amsterdam. Is that correct? Or just two. one? I posted it too. <laughs> yes. I did. I did. Um, yeah, saw something and um, I caught it actually moving out. And Jay, you saw orange orbs. Is that what your sighting was over your house? Yep. I've, I've seen things that most people would have a hard time believing. <laughs> Other things than that, then? So uh, no, the orange orbs were the, definitely the most profound. But I saw them on four separate occasions over the over the uh, property that I'm at right now, within the. Do you space know the, of do you know the, the, Rob, the Robert Salas story, Jay? Uh, on uh, Mal yeah. Malmstrom Air Base. Yeah, yeah, of course. That was an orange orb too. Yeah, that, it was quite a large one, right? If I'm if I remember. Um, I, I well, don't know I know that Mario Woods. He had a giant. He said it was. <clears throat> You know, two aircraft carriers next to each other in a big ball. So that one was giant. Yeah, the, these were small. These were like roughly the size of a basketball. That's what I've equated them to. And they were wow. slightly transparent, like a light orange color. Um, but I saw them on yeah four separate occasions, including a, one a moment where they, they came across. They stopped on a dime high up above my uh, house and then started descending down and froze like three feet above the roof of my house. That's when I saw, saw them so closely and could... You know, kind Question, of Jay. Uh, yeah. Do you do you live in a, in a, in a rural rural area or? Um... So I live I, I live on the outskirts of a city called Nottingham, uh, which is actually pretty rural on the outskirts. It's kind of like a city around the countryside. So I've got some countryside around me. A yeah. really weird thing, right? A really weird thing. So um, when I first saw these orbs, obviously I wanted to tell my family, and I, I phoned my mom and was like, "You're not going to believe what I've seen, but this is true." And I told her the whole story, and she was. You know, she she wasn't sure what to think, but she looked it up, and then she calls me back like the next day, and she's like, "You know what's really weird? As I was looking up orange orbs in Nottingham, and I found a, a newspaper article from like seven years ago, and it's talking about orange orbs, and it's talking about them on your road, and it was the same <laughs> road that I'm on. It was like it, it was like dated from like seven years prior, and it's orange orb sighted over. I'm not going to actually say my road, but this road in Nottingham." And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. So, I mean, I don't know if we sit on a ley line or some sort of crazy energy vortex, but there's definitely some weird stuff happening in uh, in Nottingham. Question, Jay. Uh, yeah. Is there any military activity in your area? There isn't, but there used to be one of the only nuclear material cleared there aerospace, Rolls-Royce aerospace uh, <laughs> place, <laughs> literally <laughs> just, just down the road, just down the road. There right? we go, there we go. Um, it, it's apparently no longer active, but I mean, I don't yeah. know, dude, like, you know, so yeah, it's it's a weird area, but I mean, I was, I was genuinely outside getting into these, you know, Look, the reason I, I the reason I ask these these things tend to to show up at, at places where yeah. there's either nuclear weapons oh, sure. or uh, a nuclear plant. So um, and immediately, you know, you 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 know there there either was something there nuclear or or is still there. But um, look, there's a big case in the Netherlands too, right? I, I've talked about it multiple times. It's called. Uh, there was a military air base in uh, central Holland. It was a small town called Susterberg. Actually, my, my brother lives like right there. Uh, I've been there. Uh, but in the, in the 70s, um, the, 1979, there was um, a share. It was a shared air base with the Americans. So uh, the American part was called Camp Near Amsterdam. And, you know, uh, a, a big Dutch newspaper a couple of years revealed the Americans actually in the Cold War era uh, stock nukes 
right there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they, 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 both governments always denied it, well, there was something there, but now, like, it's legit for sure. We know it was there. But in 1979, there were 12 Dutch military men who were witness to a UAP above that airbase. Um, and, you know, there, there's radio interviews with them. They all have the same story. It's not like they were set standing in the same spot. They were like all d- divided over the, the airbase, right? So you have all these different angles with the, these witnesses had. Um, it's, it's, a, it's quite a, an amazing story. The, the main guy, um, he's still alive. I interviewed him. Uh, he was actually escorted, uh, escorting an American GI from the Dutch part to the American part right over the runway. And he called it in, right? So he said he saw like these, these lights in the, in the distance in the sky. He said, ah, it looks like some, some plane is uh, trying to land here. But the, the landing lights on the landing strip were not on. So he called it in. And he said, uh, guys, uh, it looks like a, like a plane is trying to land here. But why, why are the landing, lights not, landing strip lights not on? And there you were like, no, but there's no, we, there's no plane landing here. And that's when, like, uh, apparently this uh, football field size UAP was like right above his head wow. <laughs> and uh, just disappeared after. But uh, that's, so, that's, yeah, the I love story. the, I love the giant ones. It's so cool. Or, I mean, yeah. or terrifying. Yeah. I don't know. Well, Burchett, uh, Burchett dropped one when, when he was on that talk with me uh, the other day, just saying, and he, he said it last time he was on with me, but there's a, a Navy friend of his a veteran who was on a, a destroyer and apparently him and other crew members witnessed a, I think he said two city blocks in size, roughly, yeah. like this vehicle. This, this Independence uh, Day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like I need to I need to find out who that was. I mean, he said he he's gonna try and contact him and, and see if he's open to talking about it, but there's gotta be other people on that ve- on that uh, destroyer that saw something like that. But uh yeah, that's that's a story that uh Congressman Burchett got from a uh from a navy veteran. So there's a few of them out there. I'm so jealous. Oh. He talked to Burchett. Uh, he's a good guy, man. He's 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 a cool guy. He's he's very chill. He's a he's very chilled out, dude. Um, I'm so, so happy he's up there. Um, so happy uh, he's there. Tim Burchett seems like yeah. you know Kirsten Gillibrand, Gallagher, Luna. Do you know Luna? I hadn't Don't heard know of Luna. her. I didn't know about her. No. Yeah, I saw her name. Um, I'll be so back. Yeah, Vinny Adams, disclosure team. He was on here last week for a live. We went from uh, UK Disclosure Team. Join us today to call senators on the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and Senate Armed Services Committee to hold a public UAP hearing with whistleblowers. Yeah, totally. Details to help you out are below. A doc with relevant senators info and the full text only script is in the second tweet. Um, So basically, we'll just run through this quick is it tells you why this is the time to action. That Grush's revelations are, are blockbuster should be investigated quickly. Like um, mm-hmm. I saw Tim Burchett uh, when he was talking to Jay mentioned, Hey, we're just giving them six months to, to move everything, you know? So I think we, time is of the essence. And then he says how to engage with our elected officials. Okay. Um, this is a call script. So to call them is a great idea. So this is the, the call script you say, okay, hello. I'm calling today about unidentified anomalous phenomena. Okay, and you can skip maybe uh, some of this. Um, and then it tells you who to call, what the numbers are, the phone numbers. So in this document here, you just click here, it opens this document. So what I'll try and do here uh, in 15 minutes, try and call my senator. Yeah. <laughs> that is, well, I, my I, senator I think, is John Cornyn. Yeah. I think this is such a boss axio, uh, action. So of awesome. Video. I was like, yeah, yeah. like that's so ballsy. Uh, my hats off to Vinny on this one. That's that's really yeah. cool. So good. Um, I, because uh, actually, um, my close friend, maybe my wife, worked uh, for uh, volunteered in college. You know, political, and they count. They count everything. You know, when you send in a letter or if you call, apparently, then they will mark it down for okay. Registered constituent wants uh, to see UAP hearings. Uh, with whistleblowers okay so there's the numbers there if you're watching this now i ask everybody in the lives to try it out okay right now i have it uh called up (laughs) like i tried to register i think they're close to their phone numbers (laughs) yeah this is well this is the office 
Mm. So of course. I'm trying to call him right now. Oh, you're going to do it right now? That's awesome. Yeah. I'll put it on. Speakerphone, man. Yeah. I don't know why my speaker's not. There we go. This is John Cornyn. I've never heard of him. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. Extension number mm. four, two, nine, three, six. Didn't answer. Mm. Yeah, I think they're not open yet. So we'll try. Uh, we'll try maybe if we're if we're still talking here in 15 minutes, and hopefully that'll work. But I'll try later. Yeah. So if you're in, if you're in the the live right now, try and call. If you're on the East Coast, it should work. And here's your numbers. And we'll go through basically what you're going to say. And then if you're watching this later, then call. That's perfect. So we want to delay time. Um, also, we'll delay it a little bit. Also, yeah. call East Coast right now. <laughs> time difference. Yeah, so there's two committees. There's Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, and then there's the Senate Armed Services Committee. So if your senator is on one of these committees, then like mine is, the Tech for Texas Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, then that's a great thing. Um, if they're not, then you just call your senator anyway. Um, maybe they each uh, have, the way, have one. By the way, I see my, my friend uh, Christian uh, in, the, in the feed. He said on the big phone home, they, they actually did that. That's true. That's true. They did call. Um, yeah, they, 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 you know, they, they, they put up, uh, you know, it, it was a call for calling your, your senator, your politicians and stuff. Yeah. And then he has, uh, this is the, what you're supposed to say here. <laughs> so, hello, I'm calling today about an unidentified anomalous phenomena. Is it all right for me to share my thoughts with you on this? You say that right away. And then they may ask if you're, where are you a constituent? And then you can say, <laughs> I kindly request. John Cornyn to lend his support to Senator Gillibrand's initiative to assist in arranging a public hearing with UAP whistleblowers within the Senate Intelligence Committee, right? So the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. So you have to see which one your, your senator is on to uphold the whistleblower protection laws established by the National Defense Authorization Act. And hopefully they say, okay, sir, thanks. And then they, they mark a little markdown. And that gets to these guys, you know? It gets to, you know, if you're a voting a voting member of their constituency, yeah, they have to listen. So yeah. if we get enough numbers, it's huge. So try that now, everybody. Let us know if it works. You know, first person to get it to work, let us know. I'll put your name up here in the comments and you'll win an, uh, some sort of prize that Max will send you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, a uh, final uh, kind of uh, thing to get to was patron questions. So thanks again to all my patrons. Makes the channel really possible. Let's go to the first question here. So Grush's interview said there might be agreements with non-human intelligences that put our future at risk. Do you have any insight into this? That's a terrifying comment. Hmm. I don't, we'll go with Jay first. Uh, so I don't have any insight. I don't have anything direct, but there are established threads within the UFO lore about that kind of stuff, right? That there's been some form of technological exchange with some group within the intelligence community way back, I think it's the 50s that they throw around, that around that time period, we had some form of interactions and agreements written up with the, the Greys, and that that was essentially give us technology and you can experiment on people as much as you want and you can, you know, you can, you can go and do your thing. And I'll tell you one thing, at least. Um, when I first got into this subject, there was an individual that reached out to me uh, who was very intelligent and, and very well versed and claimed to be from the NSA and the uh, and NASIC, National Air and Space Intelligence Center. And I was speaking with him for a couple of years, actually, uh, exchanging a lot of emails and having phone calls. He had never actually revealed his full name. I only knew him as Holden, H-O-L-D-E-N. And there's another individual that some people in this field of research know called Scott Walter. He's more in the archaeology sector, but he also met this uh, this guy called Holden and had him over to his house. And apparently, at least according to Scott, he validated his position to Scott. Never did that for me. And as I've got through this um, field, I've had more exposure to people in the intelligence community. And I've got friends who are able to do a bit more of a thorough background check for me and, and help me out because this is new territory for me. So I'm a little bit better when it comes to sussing out if someone's legitimate when they're 
claiming these kind of backgrounds. But this guy was claiming this background. And this is the same thing that he'd said, that there was a technological exchange primarily around kind of temporal manipulation, time travel technology, and that the uh, the reward for them giving us this technology was, hey, look, you can just go off and do your experiments and do whatever you want to humanity. It's all good with us. And then at least according to Holden, and this is all just like unsubstantiated, you can't you know, use this as anything that would be considered evidence. It's just what I'm saying was echoed to me by these weird individuals that come out of the woodwork when you start talking about this subject, um, was that this agreement was broken and so any interactions now occurring from these uh, intelligences are in bad faith and a you know void of, of an agreement with the US intelligence community that actually established those types of agreements. Now I'm not saying any of that's true. Uh, I'm just saying this is what was told to me by someone who was definitely not just some basic role player, but was interesting, very intelligent, multidisciplinary knowledge, uh, very good with their intelligence terminology, you know, from the IC. So they were compelling. And according to this guy, Scott Walter, uh, who actually met the guy, he did provide him with documentation that he was satisfied with. So, I mean, it's a weird one. It's hard to know with these people because I've had a few of them. And I think if you spend enough time exposed to this subject and you're public and you're getting a bit of a, you know, an audience, these people email you and they do get out. And, and sometimes you can verify them. I mean, John Ramirez sent me everything I needed to know to be secure that he was from the CIA, that he had the positions that he said he had, all of that. So, you know, if you can't provide that kind of information, you definitely shouldn't take at face value what they're saying is true, but it's still interesting information. So yeah, that's all I, I, I know. I wouldn't really call that insight, but these are just the things that got whispered to me as I came through this subject about uh, about agreements with, with non-human intelligence. So. What's your take, Max? And well, uh, what's fascinating to me, um, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, there was an Israeli general, he's still alive, by the way, retired his name is uh, Chaim Eshed oh yeah oh uh, yeah 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 he released a biography and he said some wild shit but it's basically what we're talking about right so uh, what, what what he disclosed was there is a I think he called it a galactic federation <coughs> and um, it was with some alien species humans Americans basically um, and they had a base on, I'm not sure if it was the moon or Mars or something. I think it was the moon. Um, but what's also very fascinating, there was the former um, Canadian minister of defense, Paul Hellier, right, said exactly the same thing. You know, so look, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire sometimes, right? That, that's how we, um, how we think. But... Like through my sources, there's another facet going on. And don't pin me down on this, but it, it might be uh, because of this, um, I don't know how to say this in English, but there's this uh, thing called thorium. And apparently there's something about that. Chris, we can't hear you or I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's thorium, you mean like the... The element? Is mm -hmm. it a material? Mm -hmm. Thorium. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, Should look into that, guys. Thorium. Okay, cool. Um, what, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Here we go. Um, I guess the only thing I would add is onto the agreements is Eyes on Cinema. Somehow he gets around these amazing... Okay. <laughs> like anytime I just got copyrighted... Uh, on my last video, got totally demonetized my last video because of great Good Morning Britain, you know, yeah. <laughs> demonetized. So anyway, Eisen Cinema, how he gets around that, I'm not sure. Uh, educational purposes only. But if you search Eisenhower on his channel, yeah, he has an amazing uh, archive of all these, all these old uh, videos. Um, this is all about President Eisenhower's supposed secret meeting with aliens at Holloman mm -hmm. Air Force Base. Um, and this is where you have witnesses saying that they saw him get into a saucer or they heard people talking about him get into a saucer. Um, yeah. And then get off. Uh, this was also McElroy. I'd never heard of him, former legislator, Henry McElroy, but this is probably the only other things I've saw, seen about, uh, any sort of agreements. Uh, although I did see something on NATO, there was something I remember seeing is that NATO actually even had a meeting about this looked into it for a, 
a couple of years basically and determined that there was nothing we could do to stop them. Yeah, so wasn't that? Might as, well uh, sign, uh, might as well sign the agreement because if they're, if they're hostile, there's nothing we can do. Doesn't that well, I do, from... like, like, uh, like Vinny said, uh, like uh, approach your senators. But to the Europeans, I want to say uh, do your FOIA at NATO because yes. there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was Robert Dean. Was it Robert Dean that made these claims about documents that uh, shape headquarters and, and NATO regarding interagency agreements and, and a whole vast spectrum of species? I don't know uh, what people think of Robert Dean, but he was an interesting figurehead for a while. So have you guys looked into that sort of um, in Europe? Is there any effort? You know, it seems like the U.S., uh, my audience is uh, over half U.S., so I'm definitely aimed that way. It seems like that's where a lot of the action's happening. But as far as in Europe, I heard about Project Titan. Is there, uh, you know, do you guys know what's going on in Europe? You know, is there some way we can organize a little better or we'll go with uh, Vinny's well, uh, conference group? Yeah, so this is the problem in Europe, right? Like... Um... We all speak different languages, like it, the, the countries are very autonomous. So there's not a real ex exchange, but uh, thanks to podcasters like you, Chris, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, cool. it gets a little bit more centralized. Uh, but um, this this is a real problem. So people usually just go uh, do their local FOIA requests. But this is why I'm calling for every European viewer um, approach NATO. Because, of course, this is like the umbrella, right? It's a military umbrella. So I'd say um, do your FOIA requests at NATO because anything on in, in, in European skies, seas, waters, um, it's probably going to go through NATO. So I'd say, yeah, FOIA to NATO. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. It's... Uh... You know the, the the British government absolutely knows about this, and the, the you know the Ministry of Defense and GCHQ and all of our different intelligence uh, networks. They, there's certainly knowledge. There's certainly knowledge in the aerospace sector with uh, with with the British uh, aerospace worlds as well. Um, I mean, Rendlesham Forest is such a well-known incident to us, and it was covered up so incredibly well by uh, the British and American government. And uh, you got to remember as well that the British essentially taught the Americans tradecraft and spycraft. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we did. Yeah, you know, we've we, we've been at that for a lot longer than you guys. Oh, um, thanks for so, that. Uh, yeah, you, you wel you're welcome. Um, you're welcome. This is how you lie to your populace. Yeah, seriously, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's just you know, Britain's still very much a, a class based country with the aristocracy mm -hmm. and the you know that kind of hierarchical level of information flow. I Island people, island people. <laughs> yeah, dude, a hundred percent. No, it's 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 true. So I mean, there's definitely a lot that's under lock and key in the UK. Uh, I think they're probably whoever's in control of like that portfolio in our country is probably just sitting back and going like, let's just see, let's just see how the Americans handle this, and and we'll make a decision about whether or not we're going to step forward with anything, and let's just see uh, what what occurs with the Americans first. But we definitely know. Uh, there's definitely secure knowledge. I mean, the, the five the five eyes. I, I would yeah. say within that network, it's 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 pretty well substantiated. I would say that there's knowledge within those networks. I What's got a question for you. Oh, sorry. Uh, what, I got a question for you, Jay. There, sure. uh, I've heard a lot about this Welsh case. Uh, actually, uh, there's there was uh, allegedly uh, a, a real fight between the the, the British uh, armed forces and 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 some other things yeah i think you're referring to the the penturk incident uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah I get it. I mean, that was the next question about it was um chris you may already have heard of this extraordinary incident but in case not this is an astonishing claim from witnesses at a place called penturk in wales is that it well yeah that's the one um yeah, I mean, I don't know. I did an interview with uh, some of the purported witnesses, and I actually drove down there with a friend and, and met them. But uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent. Something did go, something weird was happening. It would seem, but there was also a, a military operation. Obviously, a lot of people say that. Well, of course, they're going to say it's a military operation. That's just a cover for what they were really doing. But it's I don't know. Like, there's, there's, there's some, there's some glitches in that story and some of the claims and. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on it, if I'm being honest. All right. 
Yeah. Yeah. When I asked uh, other UFO researchers in in the UK, they yeah they they weren't sold on it. No. Because no. Too many, many. Too many questions. Too many um, questions and too many desires to sell books and TV deals very quickly. I just yeah. Do you got, think it could be like a disinformation? campaign or you know, uh, some issue like that not necessarily I, I think it might just be opportunism hmm. you know riding the the bandwagon a little bit i, I don't want to be definitive i don't know i mean maybe something did happen i just i don't know there's a lot of red flags for me personally cool all right here we go next so uh i'm not an american so i was curious about your thoughts on the potential crimes against humanity that have clearly been committed in order to maintain secrecy, and if you mm. think they will go unpunished. Well, I gotta say, so I have something to say about that because yeah. um, in my in my article when I did a Q and A with uh, David Grush, um, this was one of the reasons he, he decided to to, to speak out, right? Uh, because one of the biggest reasons was that, according to Grush, <coughs> we are sitting on eco tech that uh, could have disqualified like stuff like oil uh, uh, decades ago and uh, that organizations are purposely uh, you know uh, holding on uh, to to oil uh, and and not you know the, the, this new eco tech to to uh, advance and 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 you know be very uh, m much more friendly to to uh, earthly environments. So yeah, that that's a that's a great question actually. Yeah, I don't know. I'm super mad about it. <laughs> I made made a couple videos about it. I think the yeah. the problem is the crimes uh, are really really bad, and yeah. it's, it's kind of like when crimes get so bad that they're just like, okay, well, we've already come this far. Let's just kill the rest of the Jewish people. You know, it's kind of like oh, how it is. <laughs> I mean, that's basically how you have. Well, I'm still alive. <laughs> tragedies. So are you, are you Jewish? I'm sorry. I didn't even know. I am Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I think that's how you get these terrible tragedies, you know, is. Yeah. It, yeah. Amazing. Not happy. about I'll, it. Will I'll, it go I'll, unpunished? Yeah. I'll believe I'll believe it won't go unpunished when they reveal the names in Jeffrey Epstein's black book. Yeah. Then I'll believe like that there's there's some level of justice in the world because if we're not going to be able to openly talk about something like that, which is happening, then uh, you know crimes around UFOs seems like another step in a higher direction. So, you know, there's all sorts of uh, controversial, corrupted ish issues that are not able to be discussed, and we probably won't see justice in the right way. So, you know, yeah, I think I don't know. As I've gotten older, I just you know, I went from an atheist to now, okay, I believe, yeah, maybe we, we live forever. Or there's definitely something going on. I just think there is karma. And I think it's, they're not going to go unpunished. You know? well, that's, that's, actually, yeah. that's actually what Gorsh said, right? He said, huh. like, the people responsible for, for you know, uh, depriving us from that, that technology, you know, they, they, they should be, you know, put in front of court. Right, because because you know uh, we're we're destroying Earth. Actually, human beings are dying because of that. You know, um, so it, it is very very severe if that were true. If if it is actually true. So you had contact before he came out. Is that correct? You did an interview with him before he made his uh, video interview before Gresh no, made before. his video. No. Okay, but you contacted him after and you uh, corresponded with him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, hopefully call. he comes out and uh, Tim Burchett said on your show, Jay, that he's going to, I wants to have a hearing with him there. Yeah, he definitely wants him there. He definitely wants him there. And I guess this is uh, just a few more questions here is uh, when we get open congressional hearings with Colonel David Fravor, Lieutenant Alex Dietrich, Kevin Day, uh, Lou Alexander, Lou Alexander, Ryan Gray. I think that's okay. meant to be Alexander. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. And Fife Symington, that would be interesting. Huh? He was the governor in Phoenix Lights. Lynn Keitel, so she lives in Phoenix. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see David Grush up there, and I want to see some people with firsthand knowledge on, on the programs to say that this is what they did, and this is yeah. how we did it. That's By the way, I Chris, I, I, I want to uh, address one more thing. <clears throat> Apparently, the Department of Energy is something to really look at. Uh, of course it is. Of course it yeah. is. This is this is probably one of the most secretive 
parts of uh, whatever this 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 thing is. Um, yeah, that this is something for everyone to to look into because you know the, the Department of Energy means if there were alien technology, um, it's it's probably that department that would research that, and it's also that department that would deprive. People of, well, of, of this knowledge. They uh, they own all of the national labs. They have oversight over all of the national labs. They have their own separate classification codes with the the Sigma classifications. And uh, you know, DOE was the Atomic Energy Commission prior to being the DOE, which was obviously involved and implicated with Roswell and the CIA and U.S. Air Force. So, like, yeah, the D the DOE is kind of like you know the, the keystone. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a agencies it's not really an agency or anything like that or a department it's it's, yeah, it's pretty independent actually it's weird. It, it is it is and it's its own amorphous entity because of the nuclear uh, nuclear yeah. classification codes it can basically just suppress so much under the whole blanket of nuclear research um so yeah that's that's definitely one of the the major groups to look at and uh, doesn't get enough attention no not at all and so it's DOE. probably the most important yeah when will the sites be inspected? I think Congress, like you said, should be looking at Department of Energy, mm -hmm. CIA, and then mm -hmm. aerospace contractors. That's yep. where I would start. Yep. Uh, Congress right. described the inspections and what was found. That that would be the biggest question. Because on your, I was kind of disappointed to see on your interview with Tim Burchett, Jay. Uh, he was saying he, he doesn't know what questions to even ask. You know, he's there. <laughs> He's a congressman. Yeah, I did. I did say to him privately afterwards, yeah. like, dude, just just ask me, ask Ross, ask you know, like, I, I list a few different people. This is the point yeah. of the research community, like the, the fact that we've got someone like him who's actually reaching into the community and involving himself in it. And I said to him afterwards, Amazing. like, well, that's that's, you know, we're a we're a resource for you to tap into if you have. Jay, write questions. his questions for him. God damn. Exactly, exactly, bro. <laughs> that's basically what I said to him. I was like, dude, listen, when you need questions, just <laughs> just have a phone I call. I love you, bro. Too. You're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's we've we've had a few talks. I think it's the fourth or fifth time he's come onto the uh, the channel now. So we're we're yeah. getting a bit of a rapport, you know. Should put in a word for me. Good word. Uh, I'll put I'll put in a good word. You know. Cool. What else? Uh, that was all we had from. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Here's one question for me. How many of your friends, former pilots, have their own UAP sightings? They still won't discuss publicly. Um. I've only I talked to two pilots who said when they were flying civilian airliners, uh, they could they saw lights that they couldn't that they couldn't identify. But otherwise, yeah, I just don't talk much to my uh, I guess my old fighter pilot buddies, or they're out and retired and flying airlines. So, so let's go. Uh, well, we have a few extra minutes. Hopefully, I got some brain time from you still, in yep. a different language, Max. Thanks. Obviously, but you guys. Uh, let me see. All right. So, what questions you guys have from the from the crowd? Uh, while I'm looking, um, Jay, what do you Something... have going next? You want to talk about uh, just where people can find you? This will be kind of our last few minutes. Yeah, so. man. Well, uh, yeah, you can find me at Project Unity. That's my YouTube channel name, and on uh, on Twitter, it's the Project Unity. And uh, I, I try and secure as many interviews as I can that I feel bolster the credibility of this subject. And, you know, sometimes I even do my own kind of presentations on ideas. I like to get into the deeper, more philosophical level of the, of the conversation of what does this represent? What does it mean for humanity? Um, wh where does the consciousness component fit into all of this? Because I think that's an incredibly important thread of the conversation that's a little too uh, controversial to discuss in the way that's being discussed in government. And I understand that. That's why I think it's the responsibility of people that have had experiences or have insight into that level of the phenomenon. Um, to discuss it and to try and bring it to the forefront in a way that's more palatable and more understandable for people. So uh, I'm very interested in in trying to connect the science and the spirit um, with this subject because I think they're both completely entangled with one another, not just with UFOs, just kind of in, in general, but very solidly represented, I would say, in the UFO subject, where you do seem to have this melding between technology and metaphysics, you know, spirit and science, intuition and logic, um, so yeah, that's, that's what I spend my time doing in terms of interviews. Uh, the next one I'm going to actually probably have is, is, is with Chris. Chris is going to come oh, onto cool. the channel. We're going to have a good discussion. And that's after I, uh, I turn my brain off for a minute cause I'm uh, flying off to 
Morocco to to burn in the in the fall. I decided to go on the hot, literally the hottest month they have available. I didn't realize mm. that until I looked it up. So like, I'm gonna come back burnt to a crisp, but I'm still looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun. Awesome. Yeah, I heard June was the hottest month ever. Yeah. Well, I was Last looking month. at it. Uh, yeah. Well, Amer Americans don't use Celsius, but it's like 47 degrees Celsius, which I think is like one, 118. So uh, yeah, dude. It's like the, 116, the 118 degrees in, in Fahrenheit, I think. Or, yeah, Jesus. it's, it's going to be it's going to be hot. So see if I can survive. Uh, OK. It's not even we'll, fun, look, man. <laughs> we'll hit a few more. All right. Chris, are you still pissed with the level of uh, distraction? Concerning the latest disclosures, uh, yeah, it just seems like there's no traction in the main media. It's all in the decentralized, yeah, decentralized world. But I will say, um, kind of two points I left off uh, initially was uh, Turkey UFO. When I lived in Turkey, actually, what I found was, like you mentioned, Max, everyone is super religious. You know, it, they're Islamic, and and their whole culture has lived that way for you know, several I don't know, centuries, but since every, every religion, Christian, Jewish, everything. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but they were very open-minded on aliens actually. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah, of course there's aliens. Actually, <laughs> I think, I think, I think Islam is actually the, yeah. the, the most open religion on, uh, on UAP. On UAP. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, that's true. Okay. So you notice the same thing. So it, yeah, it's interesting. The Catholics are open-minded and the, uh, and the Muslims are open-minded. It's like uh, the Protestants now. We've got to get them on board or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, either way. Well, the Jews have Chaim so. <laughs> so That's Chaim true. Meshet. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you do. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I think it's the stigma, you know, um, that's really. So, yeah, I'm still mad about it. But I will say decentralized uh, sources have been coming up because now I don't, I'm sure you guys have noticed there's like a million more YouTubers now, mm -hmm. especially in our genre, you know, uh, now we have, you know, Jeremy Corbell has a YouTube. Ryan Graves has a YouTube, um, which which is great, actually. I'm happy to see more of those guys getting more information out there because it's not on mainstream media, uh, like I mentioned. But yep. what's interesting is I've seen even other channels. So Angry Astronaut, that's another channel. He never did like UFOs, um, and now he's just been drawn into it. You know, so as soon as you mentioned Jay, is it gets it gets numbers it gets views because people are dying for yeah. actual information you, know, you yeah. can't find it you go and talk to somebody i guess those those people kind of like us out there that it, it's not that i want to know it's that i feel i have to like the ledge is there like you mentioned i don't want to look over the ledge i'm actually scared of heights but i feel like i need to lay down or something and crawl up to the edge and look over and, and see what's there you know so ah, yeah. beats a, beats a boring there. boring nine to five job at least yeah Think those people are out there so what questions do you guys have let's see could the space forces around the world be gearing up for a possible second coming Had, yeah what's your guys take on the the false flag that i hear all the time you know it's it's like if i if you support somebody that says uh, it's any sort of threat or aliens like this there's malevolent forces then it seems like the argument i get back is it's a false flag you know well, so it's fake. I, I mean i i i genuinely try and look at both sides of it i think it's possible i mean our governments have demonstrated a unique ability to use false flags over many many decades i mean even going back into like centuries right like we, this is just how powerful institutions operate they they use false flag narratives and and they propagandize and they try and uh, manipulate the body politic into moving whichever way they want to move that's just demonstrable throughout basically all of human civilization. So the idea that we wouldn't be doing that now in the info-centric technology age is kind of really naive. So we're clearly still in a position where that's a risk. And this is such an incredibly disruptive subject. And there's a significant portfolio in the military industrial complex, which, hello, makes its money from war. So it's likely that there could be some form of uh, desire to move the narrative into a militaristic way of like, hey, we need we need lots of funding for these weapon systems and these propulsion systems, just in case these things decide they want to be hostile. And maybe there is some open space for a false flag. Do I think that this entire narrative that's been generated since TTSA and the New York Times is just to build us up towards the eventual Project Blue Beam false flag? No, not necessarily. Do I think that it could be used as a talking point 
to bolster militaristic ideas. Yes, I do definitely think that's possible. And I think existing in that space is is not so radical. Um, but you do get people on both sides of the fence who are basically die hard for whichever side it is. So, you know, you do an interview with Lou Elizondo, suddenly you're a perpetrator of the false flag narrative. <laughs> you do you do an interview with Dr. Greer, suddenly, you know, you're, you're one of these crazy uh, people on Dr. Greer's camp. So it's like either way you slice it, you're going to have people really annoyed at you because they're super like radicalized into one particular perspective on this thing. Whereas I try my best to just be like, hey, look, there's space for this. There's space for that and there's space for this. And let's just try and like figure this out together and, and not just assume that we totally understand where this is all going. Because again, this has been such a classified, sensitive uh, topic for decades. A multi generational disinformation campaign has been deployed on this subject for decades. So having the books open up now, yeah, I think you've you're okay to be a little suspicious and, and wonder where exactly that's going to be taken, especially when it's being handled by the same institutions and agencies and groups that were perpetrating that kind of disinformation campaign on the general public on this subject. So having a wary eye and being skeptical is not a problem in my eyes. Uh, just don't let it completely derail uh, what's happening now and, and become overly cynical and, and dismissive of, of what's yeah. happening because we have to acknowledge that these people are genuinely pushing a subject forward that does deserve to be pushed forward. What the ultimate agenda is for pushing it forward is a different question, in my opinion. We should still be skeptical of that and try and counter it. But uh, yeah, I, I think that um, the idea that there's either a false flag or either I, I lean more towards, and I won't take up too much space here, I'll, I'll try and shut myself up, I tend to ramble. Um, I lean towards the idea that AI and technological sophistication and a serious transformation of our species is kind of just around the corner and that the UFO subject does tie into that and that there has to be a disclosure of information because we are getting close to a time where that information is going to become far too readily available for everyone and it could be a serious shock so i think there's an acclimation process being implemented here as well because they feel like at some point people are going to know about this we might as well get ahead of that and start letting people know that it's real so i don't know but i haven't sold myself on any sort of narrative i'm i, I try and be uh, relatively neutral what, what's your take max on the on the threat narrative the false flag yeah okay so this is my take um I, I've seen a, th these little Twitter wars, etc. You know, uh, people in, engaging each other. The only thing I know is you should definitely not disqualify anyone. Not Elizondo, not Greer, not not anyone. Don't try to jump on a team. You know, try to keep um, <laughs> independent. In, uh, I guess independent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is the problem, you know, for some people, you know, this topic also becomes an identity, which is unhealthy. Um, so you see people just choosing a team like uh, Manchester or Ajax, Amsterdam, whatever. Um, that's not how it's supposed to be. You should like, 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 like look at it like religion, like Judaism, Islam and Christianity. We have one thing in common. It's we all believe in God. Right. So. This is the common goal. So don't don't choose a team. Just just keep the eyes on the horizon. And of course, there there might be false prophets, right? But you know the thing about false prophets is they tend to um, shit. Somebody's at my door. Um, <laughs> Create real prophets. Go get it. Yeah. Yeah. Go get the door. Right. I can. Uh... All right, Jay, take over, please. All right, so I think we've established that prophets tend to shit. Uh, I'll try and follow up from that with something intellectual, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm struggling. I was curious yeah. where it was going to go. I'm showing yeah, the numbers here. I guess uh, people were asking in the chat about uh, the numbers for your senators. So yeah. this yeah. is it. From Again, this is from Vinny Adams. This is his uh, tweet just from a few hours ago. I shared it as well. Vinny Adams, he's at Disclosure Team. Yeah. Basically explaining... Um, why we need to take action now. Basically, this seems like a revelation. It doesn't I've heard there have been many whistleblowers in the past. It was a, a goddamn Jehovah Witness. We were talking was about it really? religion. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's, a, that's funny. Synchronicity right there, man. And you were like, no, I don't have time to speak about God right now. I've got to talk about UFOs <laughs> yeah. with my buddies. 
Yeah, he wanted to talk about him, UFOs. He was watching live. live. Ask him what he thinks <laughs> of UAPs. Yeah, they're usually pretty open uh, to it, actually. Uh, um, uh, within the Mormon so faith. Off, you were saying, Max, so the false prophets. So if there's false prophets, do you think this will lead the yeah, way? Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll they, 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 they get, uh, deb they, let's say they, 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 look, they, there's no way, uh, you know, you, God damn it. Wow. You're a busy yeah. man. You're a busy, no, they're, busy boy. They're persistent assholes. Anyways, <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, anyways, no uh, like, like, like they, 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 they tend to, you know, reveal themselves anytime soon. You know, they, they, there's no way uh, if you if you sell bullshit, you know, they, they, you cannot keep that up, right? What's so your take on Stephen Greer? I get uh, there was a question here. I just saw. What's the panel? Yeah, the point by the, 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 the problem with, with uh, Stephen Greer is I don't think I think that the problem with his is, is he is trying to mo monopolize UAP, you know, that mm -hmm. he's uh, mm -hmm. charging money, which uh, is a problem for, for his credibility. But I don't think uh, the people, you know, for example, the conference he had, like I, I believe the people he had on, right? Those were real military men. I, I, I don't uh, think that's, that's an, anywhere suspicious at all. But if you try to monopolize UAP, you know that that's not a, that that's not a good yeah. thing. It makes you un un un. What's the word? Um, unreliable or something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like not very genuine. Not very genuine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I've brought this up because I, I I agree with those kind of statements about about Greer. Um, I, I would say to the people that are always like super hating on Greer and like, oh, he's you know he's he's just snake oil salesman, like. Mm. Okay, but to the Stars Academy of Arts and Science advertise themselves to build an aerospace craft, uh, right. an anti-gravity vehicle to entice their shareholders. And uh, as far as I'm aware, that has not been constructed. They also uh, hoovered up a bunch of materials and put them into a corruptive research and development agreement with the U.S. Army, and they have vanished off of the map. So, <laughs> like, let's just say that there are issues on both sides, guys, because not one's squeaky clean and the other one's not. There are definitely yeah. issues on both sides. And uh, Stephen Greer, um, as much as I definitely agree, there's, there's ego problems, there's this you know genuine uh, obsession with inserting himself as the most prominent person on basically every single issue that ever occurs in the space. He's got something to do with it. But he's been in this field for decades. He has had yeah. people on his team die. He's, I mean, dude, I've almost, I'm almost losing my mind after being in this field for five years. Like, I genuinely have to make an attempt to maintain my sanity sometimes in this subject field. So I think about someone who's here, been here. in this for decades. You know, I think about someone who's been in this for decades, who's been traversing genuine yeah. intelligence networks, dealing with bullshit, dealing with obfuscation, and uh, and also genuinely pushing things forward in, in quite a, a profound way to the point where where a, an ego does develop you know you start thinking you know what i am i am the guy at the top of the hill right now making the fight suddenly ttsa comes along and takes away that thunder now i'm not saying it's the mature response but it is a pretty standard psychological response to be like you know what screw these guys because they're taking away my spotlight you know what they're disinformation they're a psyop don't trust them and i think that that's the issue is that you've got a guy who was super prominent leading the charge and now is not really leading the charge and he doesn't like that fact and he doesn't like the fact that he's being left out of this new discussion so he's kind of throwing stones at them but i would say that the stones are getting thrown back the same way i've heard lou elizondo make some pretty bad statements about greer i just think that there's no need for this type of like bickering and fighting between these two people um because you know there are there are shady things in everyone's backgrounds you know and and i think that stephen greer on the whole at least for me personally I wouldn't have had my experiences if I hadn't have watched Unacknowledged when I first got into this field. As weird as it sounds, it was that exactly. documentary that really propelled me into the field and caused me to have my experiences. Do I agree with the cottage industry that's been created around CE5? No. Do I use CE5? No. I don't use his methods. The genuine principle of being able to use consciousness in that way, that's what interests me, and it does work. It is real. But I understand why people have that kind of knee-jerk reaction to Stephen Greer, but I just don't think it's necessarily the right reaction to have, especially, as you guys just said, when he's bringing out witnesses. And even well, Ross Coltart said that. Even listen, Ross listen. Coltart. Like, every, everyone who is, who is uh, uh, like, a key figure in, in, in this topic, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it. 
there are some people who get a little bit of a messiah complex right now, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm not naming names. You named a couple. So I'm just going to stick with that. But, um, you know, there, there is a little bit of a messiah complex because you are, you know, sitting on some information and you do have the network and you do have uh, um, the, the, yeah, let's say the, the, the infrastructure to, to, to cover this. But, um, you know, it's also a very lonely thing. And, that, and I can relate to that because uh, I, I covered this. And the only reason I, I do not... Uh, I, I'm not disgusted with, with Greer trying to make some money or anyone writing a book or something. Look, you are putting your neck out, right? Um, you're actually quite just sometimes even committing career suicide here. So, you know, the, these are people who are being scolded through their work, through like, like the public opinion. Uh, so if you're trying to make a buck, try to make an honest buck. But you know, the, the way Greer, Greer did it, it wasn't very handy. But, um, you know, I, I do understand because, you know, I, you know, I invest, uh, invest a lot of times. You guys do, too. I don't make anything. Right. It's, it's you know, but, you know, and that time I can never get back and that it's not being paid. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I make less than minimum wage. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely enough. That's what I you know. That's all I really need. But, yeah, it's not like we're breaking in hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't think uh, Stephen Greer is either. I don't know. Maybe he is. Um, I My last video, there was a question here on, um, and it was a good question on, curious why Chris was so hung up on Uri Geller in last video, just not sure it's the right direction for your cause, so to speak. Um, I don't know. I guess the reason I brought it up is it was amazing to me. Okay, so first, this has 726,000 views. You know, you have over a million views on this thing. Um, and the video is is just really compelling. I don't, what's your guys' take uh, on Yuri Geller? Did you see uh, this video? Well, it's Yuri Geller, goddamn it, Jesus. Yeah, he says he met with uh, Edgar Mitchell. He met with Werner von Braun, this yeah. guy who brought him down into a refrigerated. Um, I'm sorry. Under under a base. This is a piece Look, of a UFO. Yuri Geller Yuri, says. I'm sorry. This is Yuri Geller. He's like the, the the most famous con man on earth. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, but well, the point is, what if you say he's a con man? What I'm saying is, in the CIA, we know we know that the CIA has sophisticated disinformation campaigns, right? Yeah, sure. And then we same thing as Stephen Greer. Every there's people that I just showed like thinking fast, thinking slow. You know, mm -hmm. like immediately, Max, you'll be like, dude, this guy's the biggest con man ever, right? And just totally discount everything. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, all they have to do is find the people that are actually have the information. And right. then just prove them, discredit them. That's all they have to do, you know? And he's mm -hmm. never been like, I don't know, he hasn't been sued. He has, you know, he's, there he is right there. Um, so did I don't you know. See the, did you see the video in the background? Did you see the Geller uh, interview with uh, Johnny Carson back in the day? I watched it. Yeah, I don't, I mean, he, yeah. he couldn't do it. Um, no, he's full of shit. <laughs> but I mean, why? The, I mean, the remote viewing experiments he did with the CIA um, Come are on, legit. Man. You know, they say that that he could do it, you know? I'm not saying, look, it's Yuri Geller. I'm, I'm just, no. <laughs> you don't believe in remote viewing or? I, what's I the do, issue? I, I, no, I no, 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 of, no, no, no. A lot of people are I, like. I do not, I do not, I do not, I do not, not believe in remote viewing. I do not believe mm. Yuri Geller. And Yuri Geller, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. What's your take, Gay? What, what do you think? I don't, I, I don't know enough. I don't know enough yeah. about him, really. I haven't done enough of a deep dive into him. I know that my friend Nick Cook, um, pretty sure it was Yuri Geller. He's a spoon bender, right? He's the one that bends. Yeah, the he's the spoon yeah. bender. Yeah, I'm pretty, like Nick Cook's a, a, a good friend and he's a trusted guy. He's not some wacky type. Um, and he he, uh, he had Yuri Geller over to his house and, and the guy bent spoons and showed him it and he could do it. I think it's real. I, th I think you can do that kind of stuff. I think it goes into like the whole, you know, chi ancient kind of energy flows it's a science there's a there'll there'll be an electromagnetic physics yeah yeah you know? regular was put on the spot at carson he cannot bend a shit yeah but you know what mate if i was put if i yeah. was put on the if i was put on the spot to summon orbs i wouldn't be able to do it yeah i'm telling you like there's there's a there's a very i'm not saying he's legit i'm just saying that there is very subtle 
changes and inferences with consciousness when you're trying to make these types of things happen. Every time I tried to go out and record something on my phone and was trying to get into these meditative states and project the intention with contact, nothing turned up because I was too distracted by the phone. I was too worried about capturing footage. I wasn't actually getting into the state of mind that was required. And then when I would just be chilling, and I wouldn't be thinking about trying to get evidence and I'd just be appreciating the moment and I'd be sending off these intentions, things would happen. Yeah, but Gallo was performing this to, to millions of people. And when uh, uh, Carson changed the, 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 the metal, <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not backing him up honestly like he could be a com he could be completely full of shit all i'm yeah. saying is that when it comes to like uh you know being pressured into doing something psychically i'm sure that there's a level of uh interference that can occur where it's like oh god i'm under a lot of pressure to perform right now and and i can't do it i know that i wouldn't be able to you know prove my experiences i stopped trying to get evidence for it i was just like i don't care i don't care i know i've seen what i've seen and that's it uh, you know it doesn't bother me right. okay yeah. look I, I i do not i, I think there's people who actually can do the stuff Geller uh, is, is, is okay. proclaiming. Yeah, that was my question. Do, do you think it's possible? Yeah. yeah. I do think. You just think he's but not legit. Yeah. I, I, the Geller is not legit. No. I talked to Sean Cahill. I interviewed interviewed him. Um, he's a witness, you know, for the Tic Tac. And he bent a spoon. He showed me the spoon. He bent, like, with his, uh, with his mind. He said, you know, you never... The only time you'll believe it is if you do it. So I don't know. I guess I have to start. I'll well, just remember bending. what that little kid said in the Matrix. Just pretend it's not you. You know, it's not the sp the spoon that bends. It's yourself. I think there's actually a level of truth to that. It's about mind over matter and being able to manipulate your reality in a way that you know is linked to your conscious intention and your belief of what you can do and it's all very complex and esoteric and philosophical and weird i think it can be explained by science and i think quantum computation and consciousness studies and ai are actually going to get us to a point where we understand the innate abilities of consciousness and its interactions with the material world okay yeah because i'm you said you've been in, in this game for five years, Jay. I guess Something for me, like it's only two, a little over two now. It is difficult. So I'm still learning, you know. I think if the data is is legit, you know, you, even if you don't like Stephen Greer, you know, what about all of the witnesses that he's bringing forward? Exactly. You know? Like, don't, exactly. Let, don't let your impression of Stephen Greer, right or wrong, mm. uh, interfere with your ability to, to look past that, you know, yeah. avoid the think fast. Um, and look at the evidence. Although you don't want to waste your time, obviously I get it. You know, um, I, hopefully he's legit. You know, I don't. Hopefully this video, you know, is is legitimate that he says he believes is legitimate. But I don't know. There's so much mis misinformation out there. So yeah, amazing this the, uh, gentleman. This is the and, reason. This is the reason why I thought that the the conference Greer gave was so important because all of these military men, they were so sincere. You know, the, these were real experiences. You know. Mm. Um, Whatever you think of Greer, you know, don't think of that. Look at these guys. That 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 is what most what is most uh, important, I guess. Yeah. Well, even then, right? He so I I did uh two videos on on that. One of them was Hecker, and he's the Raytheon contractor, and he yeah. proposes that yeah. the ice cube neutrino is a weapon, or at least could be directed energy. It could transmit. Uh, I also got a lot of pushback on that. You know, it's just. Amazing, amazing story. Michael Herrera, he's the Marine as well that yeah. Stephen Greer brought forward. Yeah. And he said that uh, he saw yeah, humans essentially using alien technology, which to me denotes that there's a, a serious, very, very dangerous criminal element. You know, like they made a deal with the devil back in the 50s and now we're, we're left with the fallout. Um, but hopefully with decentralized media, decentralized science, that's what we're trying with UAP Society and all you guys out there, then... I don't know. Hopefully we can make a difference. Agreed. That's all I got. So Max, where can people find you, buddy? Uh, my YouTube channel, Moskowitz Show. Uh, Moskowitz Twitter, is what I saw, yep. Yeah, Moskowitz Show or Twitter, Max Moskowitz, Instagram, Max Moskowitz. And thank you for everything. Any cool things coming up or any interviews um, or trips? What's your focus? Well, I am... Um, working on something but i'll i'll tell you later chris <laughs> okay all right cool hey chris right, thank you for thank you for having me on man yeah yeah thanks for having me as well chris it's been great definitely jay thanks for both your time and uh yeah i can uh we can meet up next week jay to be on your show
Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Thanks for, for the having, live for audience. Um, yeah, so I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, guys. Take See care. You. All right, guys, uh, just to make sure we had no more questions, thanks again to to Max and Jay. That was awesome. Uh, that's the first time I've uh, talked to Jay, and the second time I've talked to Max, the first time was over a year and a half ago. So it was great to reconnect with uh, the European investigators out there. Great to see Mark Beams. Thanks for being here. Let's see if we have any, anyone else. Hello, Ali. Thanks as always for your help as a moderator, all your time. Definitely peace. Um, I'm going to try and call that. I'm going to try and call him again. Maybe it'll work. I'll show you guys. The... Let me get the phone number up. Okay, so you call your, and you, as well as your two congressmen, uh, let them know uh, your two senators, and I don't, I don't think you can call the president, but let's try it out. Yeah, I noticed that. It, yeah, as well. The surf is not up here, but it was great a few days ago. Thank you, Allie. I'm sorry, exception mm. number four, two, okay. nine, three, six. Well, I will try them again later. And again, you can go to Vinnie Adams' tweet if you need more of that and basically just say here, we're calling about unidentified anomalous phenomena. Is it all right to talk about this? Can we? Can I share my thoughts with you? Yeah, I'm a constituent in your in your district. I kindly request John Cornyn, the senator, to lend his support to Senator Gillibrand's initiative and assist in arranging a public hearing with UAP whistleblowers within the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence or Senate Armed Services Committee. You know, you can find that out right in here. And then I would say what you actually think. You know, Senator Gillibrand's leading the charge on an initiative to seek out the truth. I think it's very important for democracy, oversight, and transparency. You know, the civilian... We, we should own the military. We should be able to control them. There shouldn't be secret agencies out there, secret whoever they are, um, running around without congressional oversight, right? That means that the people have lost control. <laughs> That's what that means, everybody. So, and yeah, I think, I think Max is spot on, probably with Department of Energy. Just look where your nuclear, your nuclear energy secrets are, who has access to those, and start running down names, I mean. Yeah, there you go. Those numbers verified. Not sure. All right, guys, any last questions? Thanks to all the patrons. Thanks so much, guys. Really does make it possible. Like I said, uh, my last video, you know, demonetized on Uri Geller. Is it possible to hack the government to get these files? Someone did try to hack. I think we should just keep working on decentralization. All right, that's the only thing. Sunlight, sunlight kills all viruses. So if we can just continue to bring out information, we can show everyone on the planet that we really are kind of in the same situation. Just you can call the government a different name. Maybe you speak a different language. But you know, when I tran when we I translated, used used uh, Google Translate for Max Mo Moskovitz's uh, article, it was perfect, written in perfect English. So now language should be even less less of a, a divider between us. So, yeah, I'm excited. All right, guys. Yeah, it was a brick kid. He did hack it. The DOE, OIG. All right, we do need answers, man. Seriously, it is ridiculous. There, they listen. Your congressmen do listen, and the numbers do count. So take a few minutes. You really can't help. It does actually make a difference. So unfortunately, we don't have Lou to go and make his big phone home anymore. Whatever happened, but. We can do it on our own. So thanks to Vinnie Adams and Disclosure Team. Thanks again to Max and Jay. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Call your senators, congressmen. What else are you doing? All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Peace.